Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay so good afternoon everyone <coughs> So I welcome you all uh, to the second live discussion session for the course Psychology of Stress, Health and Wellbeing. Uh, so I think till now we have covered about I think uh, module 7 is going on I think. Uh, so the live session as we know you can directly ask questions if you have any doubts, questions, any queries related to whatever content we have covered. Uh, you are most welcome to ask any questions. <coughs> So, uh, so let's start and if you have any queries you can just type here and ask me. <clears throat> so in the meantime, uh, I will take few questions that are already uh, you know, asked by students of this course through Google form. So <clears throat> uh, most of, uh, many of these students actually asked about this assignment five question number one so there was some confusion about it so where I uh, I think there was some typing mistake in the question itself uh, it was uh, asked shallow and slow breathing it should be shallow and rapid breathing so that was a typing error so we have already informed the technical team uh, so this question will be removed uh, so you don't have to worry even if your mark is deducted uh, it will be calibra calibrated later on okay so uh, it has already been informed so don't worry about that. So this was a kind of typing mistake. Uh, so I think this is taken in. Most of you have asked about this assignment, uh, the error in this assignment. Uh, another uh, Anila Skaria, uh, she asked uh, that, you know, she is uh, very happy with the content of the course. And it is giving a lot of insight about the, about our own selves. Uh, she has asked, can you suggest some psychology test for I think higher education institution uh, for better understanding of ourselves and the student we taught? So this was the one part of her question. Uh, so there are many uh, psychological tests and assessments available. Uh, some of these tests are actually very specific so if someone has some specific issues let's say uh, the issues related to depression and issues related to anxiety so there are spe specialized tests to measure that for general uh, educational institute uh, some of the tests that can be just you know used by any students uh, some of these tests could be let's say you know somebody wants to know about their you know, emotional awareness or emotional intelligence so there are tests that are you know uh, available uh, some of the tests are freely available some are not freely available uh, like emotional intelligence question you know test 2.0 uh, so this is a test which can be used in the educational institutions where you know students can understand and become aware about their emotional aspects how intelligent they are with their emotions uh, emotional intelligence as a concept we have not directly dealt with in this course but this is something very important in terms of understanding you uh, know uh, dealing with the conflicts of your life and the quality of life is overall you know, depends on you know emotional intelligence so this is one test that can be generally used you know, to understand awareness about our own self also there are tests that are related to you know finding one's strengths psychological strengths uh, so in this course itself, we have two dedicated lectures on psychological strengths where we, I have talked about the different approaches to understand mm -hmm. psychological strengths. And so there are psychological assessment tests available to kind of measure your own strength or find out or explore your own strengths. Uh, so one is like, you know, VIA character strength assessment instrument. And there is another like Clifton strengths survey instruments. Uh, so these are uh, some of the assessment instrument that can be used in general to edu in educational institutions uh, and they can be kind of you know we all can explore ourselves just to kind of enhance understanding about ourselves uh, 
so on also we can have we can use some personality tests to understand what kind of personality traits we have like big five uh, you know, personality inventory is there which is freely available uh, so like that you know there are many tests which are which can be used for general population including higher educational institutions and there are some tests which are which can be used in a specific context if somebody has certain issues or somebody wants to know something very specific uh, there are tests available so i mean depending on the context and the situation we can kind of uh, use certain tests <laughs> Uh, the the other part of the question she asked is that uh, sir in economics we deal with well-being of people i am interested in looking at well-being from the interdisciplinary perspectives can you suggest some psychological theory that should be looked into uh, it's very true that you know there is a branch in economics which is called behavioral economics where you know, a lot of research from the psychology is kind of you know borrowed or it is kind of interdisciplinary area where a lot of contents are come from the psychology so in economics for example nowadays a lot of research also goes into the subjective well being uh, which i think we have already started in the uh, i think module 6 or 7 uh, where we talked about the concept of well being and particularly subjective well being economics are also very much interested in the concept of subjective well being because the economists generally used to think that you know objective parameters are good enough to understand human well being so if you if people are given you know let's say proper income you know and the ability to cons consumption and the access to various objective parameters such as health education and so on uh, but a lot of research shows that you know people there may be discrepancies between the objective parameters let's say somebody's income and whether somebody is happy or satisfied with their life or not so subjective well being is something hard how people think in their mind so there may be always some kind of discrepancy even though somebody may have very good income but still one may not have be satisfied with their life so th those discrepancies can economists have observed in their research so there is why a lot of uh, economists are also getting into uh, the subjective well being research where they try to understand how actually people feel about uh, whatever they have uh, so subjective well being is one area where economists and psychologists are kind of are doing uh, are interested in, in this concept uh economists are also interested in the decision making process where a lot of psychological processes are involved uh, how emotion influences a decision consumer behavior so these are areas where psychologists are doing research as well as economists are also interested so these are some of the areas like consumer behavior you know psychology of emotions subjective well being so these are some of the areas which uh, are of interest for both economists as well as psychologists uh i think uh, some of the questions have come in the live so uh, can you just move uh so mr groom is asking what is the pattern of the final exam so final exam will be of objective type just like the assignment questions so i think you will have 50 questions each question will carry two marks and all questions will be of multiple choice question the patterns will be very similar to the kind of questions that we are asking from the assignment but don't think all the question will come from the assignment you know there will be questions beyond assignments <clears throat> uh bashir ansari hello sir good afternoon good afternoon uh carmen rose asks King, good evening, sir. Which topics must we particularly focus for the exam? All topics should be given equal importance. Questions will come from all topics, so I I cannot tell you one particular topic. You just go through the handouts and the reading materials and video lectures of all the topics, because question will come from all the topics. Uh, Shreya is asking, "Hello, sir. I really like your way of explaining by flow diagram. Thank you, Shreya. I happy that you can understand." Uh, Mala Mahajan is asking, "What is the pattern of paper for exam? I have already tell, told you. Final exam will be of multiple choice questions. About 50 questions will be there. Each question will carry two marks, and uh, questions will be very similar to the kind of question that you are." getting in the assignment Varun Kohli is asking good evening sir i really have no words your way of teaching is very good uh, 
really thank you I, I always feel happy that if you are understanding the content of the lecture shreya sir uh, there are many uh, scientists name in the course module do we need to remember all um, we don't have to remember all the names but there are some few names like you know some theories you no know, giving some you know major theories uh, those name we should remember there are many major theories we have discussed throughout the lecture uh, who who are the kind of prominent names in those uh, theories uh, which you should remember the main major theories who uh, we have discussed uh, you don't have to remember all uh, the all the names that we have discussed but the major theories you should remember because there may be some questions related to some names of some major theories also <clears throat> bashir ansari is asking hello sir uh, good afternoon sir i want to make my phd synopsis on ptg among female sex workers is it appropriate or not um uh Bashir, obviously, I'm not here to guide your PhD, but uh, obviously you can go ahead. But uh, for choosing a PhD topic, you know, broadly it is okay. But you need to look into the literature, find out gaps in literature. You know, you need to look into what is the what are the existing studies available in the area of PTG. Uh, accordingly, you need to talk to your supervisor and uh, you know find out appropriate research questions and appropriate methodology to address that. Uh, but i think uh, obviously this could be one of the area where you can work <clears throat> shreyal drole is asking uh, what can what i can do after i complete this course with the nptel certificate uh, this certif th these are certificates which basically show that you have done certain course which basically means you have knowledge about this course so this will help you to enhance your cv if you are interested in having a career in those direction uh, let's say you are doing something related to counseling clinical psychology this kind of courses will be very helpful this this will be some kind of additional advantage it will give apart from that i mean uh, don't just look at this course from the professional perspective this course is very intimately connected to our own life and understanding about our own selves Uh, how we behave in our day-to-day -day functioning. Uh, so I think the, the the best advantage of this course is that it will help us to understand about ourselves, uh, which is most important. Apart from that, obviously there will be professional advantage if you want to pursue some career related to psychology. Uh, Mr. Groom is asking, sir, when I am studying, I am getting unnecessary thoughts. What should I do? i mean uh, unnecessary thought means what i mean is it really interfering with your daily functioning or focusing thoughts are random most of the people we all have all kinds of thoughts all the time but if it like too much of rumination and it is interfering with focusing uh, some of the coping strategies that we have discussed like you know you can uh, do some of the simple techniques related to breathing uh, and uh, meditation exercise i have in detail you know discussed in the lecture as well as given you know practical instruction how to do that so a little bit of those kind of exercise can help you to kind of focus or kind of you know remove all these unnecessary thoughts uh, so one thing if you start fighting with your thoughts they will increase in the frequency you know you cannot win by fighting with thoughts thoughts are coming all the time you know so one thing you need to understand you know, uh, let them come you just observe them neutrally if you don't kind of attach yourself too much uh, then slowly slowly they will die out this is the nature of thoughts uh, but the thing is we get too much of identified with the thoughts too much of getting attached to the thoughts if one thought says if a thought says uh, i am miserable you become miserable that means you are identified with that thoughts if you just see it's a just a thought it's not a fact just observe it will come and go automatically you don't have to no thoughts ever remains in your mind no they come and go all the time so all the thoughts will come and you just remain uh, do this exercise for sometimes every day just observe whatever thought comes just look observe them without identifying without saying them good or bad just like you know you look at strangers when you sit nearby a road uh, 
they're just coming and going you are not particularly interested slowly slowly automatically they will die out so this is the nature of thought you know um, so just just see the lecture on mindfulness and meditation one lecture uh, there in detail i have talked about how to deal with your thought that can be very helpful uh, sandhya raghavi is asking sir what is the actual difference between thoracic breathing and abdominal breathing thoracic breathing as i said now there are two ways of breathing or two patterns of breathing that we all do one is uh, very <clears throat> shallow and rapid shallow means uh, when your breathing is around chest area you know you just when you inhale it goes around around your chest area so your chest kind of moves and so it's very fast so most of the time when we are very tense and stressed and high with high anxiety whenever we experience high anxiety automatically our breathing patterns become very shallow and rapid you might have observed it is automatically this is how body kind of responds to your mental experiences so this is called thoracic or chest breathing so means your breathing is not deep it is very shallow when you when you have a thoracic breathing basically your chest is moving and uh, it is very fast so the basic mean this this happens mostly when we experience a lot of stress and anxiety uh, we are very nervous then this kind of breathing happens on the other hand when you are relaxed uh, your breathing is generally deeper it goes up to the abdomen so that is why it is called abdominal breathing and uh, you know generally they, it becomes slower so when you become relaxed your breathing becomes slow and deep when you become tensed your breathing becomes fast and rapid and shallow so these are two patterns of breathing which body kind of picks kind from your mental experiences and it functions accordingly so it's very automatic so uh, by understanding this patterns we can kind of change our mental experiences from the breathing patterns also so let's say when we are very stressed and anxious if you change your breathing pattern to very deep and slow your mental experience stress will reduce so it is directly connected to your mental experiences so deeper and basically abdominal breathing helps you to relax uh, whenever you are relaxed you cannot be stressed so that is the idea you can change by changing your breathing pattern you can change your mental experiences you can reduce your stress and anxiety so this is one of the very effective way of kind of immediately what you can do is uh, you know uh, op, you know focus on your breathing make it more deeper and slower <clears throat> so prakash uh, bora is asking uh, our final exam will be subjective or objective now your final exam questions will be all objective multiple choice question just like uh, the patterns of the question will be just like uh, what you what you were doing in your assignments Carmen Rose is asking, sir, uh, how would Weiner's attribution theory be applied for talent or motivation? The locus, stability, and controllability. Uh, Weiner's uh, theory is basically talking about, you know, dif talking about different factors which influences how people attribute various things or various actions that they do on whether it is on certain factors which are stable or unstable or some factors which are controllable or uncontrollable uh, based on that you know people may have different motivations for example you know or internal external factors so let's say a factors which is very in internal and stable factor for example your ability your intelligence is an internal factor means you have certain kind of intelligence and ability it is something within you so it's an internal factor it's a stable factor because ability and intelligence do, they don't change all the time no? so that is why it's stable now let's say in the context mostly this theory is used in the context of success and failure so let's say you attribute your failure to your internal stable factor let's say you say i failed because i lack ability so your emotional experiences will be very different from when you explain something to let's say internal unstable factor such as hard work 
it is an internal means you can control your hard work whether you do hard work or not it depends on you it is unstable means it can be changed you, you can choose or decide to do more hard work or not to do so it is in your control it is controllable factor so you say if i i have failed because of lack of hard work see so this is an internal unstable factor now your emotional experiences will be very different now here you know it this is a factor i can control uh, that is why you know you can be more motivated to do your best in the next time but when you explain that i failed because of lack of ability you will be highly demotivated because you will say i cannot do it how much ever i try i cannot succeed here so your motivation will go down and you will not be able to work hard in your future so how do you explain your success success and failure uh, it will depend on your future motivation how much whether what kind of path you take uh, so it will depend on how you explain your success and failure what factors you put into in terms of explaining why i have succeeded why i have failed you know uh, if you all the time let's say you explain your success and failure based on external factors okay it is because of luck that i have you know passed or failed it will have a very different implications on your life as compared to when you say it is because of my hard work that i have passed or failed it will have a totally completely different implications so that's why how do you explain certain things in your life successes and failure what factors you attribute uh, will influence your future motivation which will influence you how much effort you put in the future in certain dimensions of your work so weiner's theory talks about all these factors uh prakash pura is asking sir due to health issues i missed assignment 5 can i continue uh, yes prakash i know uh, here in this 12 week course so the basic idea is eight best uh, assignments are taken out of 12 so even if you miss four assignments you can still qualify in the sense uh, best of eight will be taken so if you have missed one assignment i think you should you should not worry about it. uh arnab uh, biswal is asking what is the career in psychology other than clinical psychology there are different options obviously you know uh, if you have seen uh, people who are do business managements mba there is a dedicated course on uh, organizational behavior so it's a basically course from psychology uh, so mba has a lot of psychological content uh, people who do counseling also are basically from the psychological background uh, you know there are even other branches which are not very not very prominent in india but in the western countries like forensic psychology you know uh, where people involved in various criminal cases police defenses uh, they have also specialized people in the psychology also also in the academics you can come just like any other discipline academics also psychology has scope uh, so like that you know there are different options available uh, it is not just only the clinical psychology uh, which is the only thing it is they could generally when they hear about psychology they think only in terms of those mental disorders and those things so this is one aspect of psychology there are different branches uh, as i said organizational behavior which is related to management part how people behave in the organization uh, social psychology is also connected to organizations but how that deals with how people work in the social situations it has its own uh, implications uh, counseling clinical psychology are kind of connected but clinical psychology is more you know practice oriented it is a little bit more exhaustive course than counseling psychology uh, so like that you know um, there are different branches Uh, where there are applications of psychology. Uh, Geeta Devi is asking: Is there negative score in the final examination? As far as I know, there is no negative score. Uh, Bashir, thank you, sir. Thank you, Bashir. Uh, Nikki Singh is asking: Good evening, sir. Is this helpful for counseling field? yes a lot of this content of this course can be is is directly connected to counseling because it is related to a lot of mostly how to deal with a lot of issues of your life so a lot of this content will, will be directly connected to counseling psychology also 
Arnab is asking, uh, said someone was so good in studies till 10th and suddenly unable to concentrate and feel suffering with ADHD and depression and anxiety and unable to concentrate at all. Now wants to study psychology. So what's your question? I mean, if that person wants to study psychology, it's up to him. If he and his family allows him, I mean, there is no issue, he can go ahead. So if someone is interested, I don't see any problem. I mean, Gita is asking, sir, uh, kindly guide us and give us some tip for preparation final examination. So for final examination, as I already said, uh, the question will be of multiple choice, just like your assignment questions. Uh, the lecture handouts, you go through all the lecture handouts because these are very concise. Uh, go through all the lecture handouts. Uh, you maybe all the details will not be there in the lecture handouts but a lot of most of the content will be there in the handouts so uh, in the handouts i might have you know written somewhere no go to video lectures for clarification so you go to what look at some of the video lectures also in some of the contents will you know more elaborately explained in the video lecture lecture handouts are mostly all the summary summarized form of contents video lecture is more you know, in the detail explanation also included uh, so go through all the contents uh, if you don't have time at least go through the lecture handouts uh, that will help you to kind of understand you know, the contents <clears throat> mm, Arti is asking sir I am yoga therapist I am really like this course as I can use this course in helping the society more better way can you please suggest any book to dig deeper for emotional intelligence uh, Arthi, uh, I'm happy that you are able to, uh, you are finding this course helpful in your profession also. Um, yes, a lot of these contents are directly related to, you know, self increasing self-awareness and all these things. Emotional intelligence, I have not directly dealt with in this course, uh, but, you know, I think I'm planning to, in fact, uh, proposed, already proposed a course on psychology of emotions, where, you know, I will uh, deal with emotional intelligence in detail also. So if that course comes, probably you can take that. Um, there are many uh, books available. I think the most popular book is Daniel Goldman's book on emotional intelligence, how it can matter more than IQ. Uh, that is kind of one of the first book that may, made this whole concept very popular. Then uh, later on, many other books also came into uh, existence. Uh, so, I mean, uh, probably you can take that course if it comes in probably now, within one year or not. Uh, then maybe some other courses available also related to emotional intelligence, you can look into that also. Uh, <clears throat> Anjali is asking, sir, kindly guide us for exam. Again, I have already told you, uh, go through the lecture notes properly and wherever you don't understand, go to the video lectures ideally you should look at all the video lectures but let's say you don't find enough time at least go through the lecture notes uh, at least most of the contents will be cleared through lecture notes because, because in lecture i have explained all these things sometimes in the notes some technical things will be there you may not understand so go to the le video lectures and try to understand how it is how i am explaining all these things and uh, beyond that also if you don't understand you can uh, you know write uh, email also in the ask question section of the course uh, mr Bru uh, bashir ansar is saying sir your teaching style is amazing can you come up with other courses on so i mean future it would be very helpful for competitive exam like uh, thank you bashir for again uh, appreciating um, i'm planning for another course i don't know uh, it depends on because course should be accepted and it takes time uh, but I'm planning for one more course let's see how it uh, how much time it takes uh, but anyway you will under you will come to know if, if it comes thank you mr. groom sir uh, how much weightage is there for assignment for final exam I think uh, I think around 10 to 15 questions from assignment will come. The ratio is something like that, you know. 
<coughs> Sandhya is asking, sir, in one of the assignment, it is asked that shallow slow breathing also known as. Uh, yeah, this is I have already addressed in the beginning. There was a typing mistake. Uh, this question will be removed and. Uh, you know, the, the marks will be kind of calibrated accordingly. If someone's mark is deducted, it will be kind of uh, not dealt with properly uh, by the technical team. So don't worry about this. Anjali Singh, uh, sir, kindly give us tips for preparation. I have already gave, you know, told you about this. So question will be of multiple choice question type. Uh, read uh, properly all the lecture notes. And if you don't understand anything from the lecture notes, go to the video lectures and you know where detailed explanations will be there. Fatima is asking, sir, 12 week course has three credit points. Why so? It should be four credit course. I have noticed that NPTEL 12 course has four credit points. I think it is from the NPTEL side, they have given some general pointer of three credit. Uh, different institution have their different mechanisms. Uh, some institution they give uh, four credits to 12 weeks. Some institution even give five or six credits to 12 week course also. Uh, so it depends. Uh, I think uh, whatever you know, you need to find out your own institution how much credit they are giving for 12 weeks and PTL course. Uh, but it is not fixed. From NPTEL side, they give a general, I think, three credit for 12 weeks, but the different institutions have different mechanisms because these are 30, 30 hours lectures are there. Some even give four credits, some even give five, six credits also. So try to find out from your institution how much credit they will be giving for 12 uh, weeks course. <coughs> and Nitin is okay, sir, in one of the assignment, it asks shallow, slow breathing. I think you have, I have already discussed this uh, two, three times. So I think this should be clear. <clears throat> uh, Shreya is asking, sir, I am pharmacy student, but I am interested in psychology, so I choose this course. My question is, can I counsel and help people after completing this course? Uh, this is not for professional counseling kind of course. Uh, this is a course that has some content related to counseling also, but this is not like you will become a professional counselor after doing this course and start doing counseling. Uh, that is not the idea. This is a course related to certain specific topics which are very important for our life and our own well-being. Uh, so the idea is we need to understand, it will help you to better understand yourself. And if something helps you, probably you can ask or help other people by saying that, okay, you can do this and that. But don't think you will become a professional counselor and start giving counseling. Uh, but if some of the ideas, some of the concepts has helped you in your own life, you can always pass on this information to others. Uh, but it is not, you know, it will, this is not a course after which you will become a professional counselor. For counseling, you know, there are separate courses and degrees are there. You need to complete that in order to become a counselor. So this course will not make you counselor, but some of the topics are connected to counseling. Um, Nitin is asking, sir, in one of the assignment, it is asked, hello, and this is already, I think, we have addressed. Don't worry about that. This question will be removed and mark will be calibrated accordingly. JP is asking, sir, I'm pursuing master's in counseling. Now, shall I be able to practice counseling after this course for I need license, please? So if you're doing already counseling course, I think after doing that, uh, probably you can, uh, no. You have to see the terms and condition of the course that is given by that particular institute. Uh, probably you can practice as a counselor. This course is not directly related to counseling, but some of the contents of this course will help you to understand counseling process, understand some therapy processes. Uh, so this will be kind of an additional advantage for you if you are doing counseling course. Uh, Gita is asking, I really enjoy throughout the course and it gives me self-improvement about personal and professional. I thank you for this valuable course. Sir, can you suggest any uh, novel for self-improvement? Novel as you mean some storybooks or something? Mm. There are many uh, books are available nowadays. If you can uh, go to 
that are related to self help uh, but there are some quotes related to um, some books these, these are not novels uh, but these are the courses that related to happiness and uh, you know well being uh, if you want i can you can just write me a mail probably i can uh, give you names of few books a novel i don't know any specific novel as such but some books if you want related to well being and other thing i can uh, give you you can just write me an email i will just send you that karman uh, thank you sir for explaining thank you karman prakash thank you sir okay thank you uh karman is also asking sir uh, is it necessary to go through the textbook references as well uh, not directly necessary this textbook additionally it is given to you know, broaden your understanding if you go through those textbooks probably it will it will be much in you know, a detailed explanation will be there but um, if you go through lecture handouts it's not absolutely necessary to go through the texts ah uh, geeta thank you sir thank you geeta shivam is asking sir my friend is ba graduate and has fear for his job he is clearly coping with stress and unable to understand reason for his anger and changing behavior ah uh, should i tell him he is in stress i mean if you think he is under stress i mean sudden symptoms will be visible i think he himself will understand that if you are under stress we all understand that we are under stress you can kind of make him understand some of the understanding that you have you are gaining insights from this course you can pass on those uh, some of this understanding to your friend to help to cope better with the stress um, this is the best you can do yeah professor manoroma is asking sir is this course sufficient for practicing as a counselor uh, professor uh, manoroma no this is not a course that after doing that you will become a counselor this is not a counseling kind of course directly uh, for to become a counselor you need to go through you know uh, some degrees and diplomas or master degree in counseling this course obviously some of the contents are related to counseling but uh, this is not um, a certified course for becoming a counselor but if you are interested in counseling or if you are doing already some counseling courses this will be an added advantage to you uh, mr groom uh, sir what are the things that we have to bring for the final exam hall i think all this instruction will be uh, sent to you before exam anjali uh, which type of organizational approach was proposed by collins and cullians and include has his candlings our uh, options are i'm not able to understand your question collins cullian include has his candlings uh, sorry anjali i could not understand i mean uh, your question is not clear to me super specialization verification resourceful cognitive option i don't think these are the terms and question that i have used in my assignment uh so i am not able to understand probably uh you can write me email about if you have any specific thing sandhya is asking uh, john is experiencing high stress in his job consequently he is having frequent episode of fight and conflict with his spouse at home this is an example of dash additive effect sir so what is your question this is an example of dash so basically here what is happen uh, the uh, the stress that one is experiencing in his organization it is kind of getting shifted to the personal life you know additive effect is different additive effect means in a, every day if you have let's say one stress in the morning then while uh, at your home then you leave home then there is an 
stress number two in your traffic you are having a lot of traffic jam issues so it is causing a lot of stress so this is stress number two then you go to office boss is shouting at you this is stress number three all this stress will be kind of accumulated okay so accumulated it will have an impact you know because stress one has not gone and stress uh, two is kind of accumulated on top of that stress three is accumulated on top of that so this is called an additive effect means one stress is getting added to other so this is not a case of additive I mean it is more like kind of transfer of stress from one domain to another domain uh, Gita is asking okay sir can you give your uh, mailed your book suggestions okay if you have mailed I will check it what is the uh, she is also asking what is the necessary criteria in India as well as abroad to practice counseling after doing masters in psychology in India we don't have unfortunately we don't have a lot of these regulations for practicing counseling a lot of people just after doing masters in counseling or doing some diploma in counseling they start kind of practicing and um, start practicing uh, in abroad I think this is much more regulated so you need to get certified from certain agencies and those kind of thing uh, so that regulation part is missing in India um, I have seen a lot of people just you know uh, doing masters and uh, start doing practicing it's okay if, if, if you are able to help people when uh, you, are, you are getting client it's fine uh, but uh, regulation part is much more stronger in the western countries you know for becoming a proper practitioner you have to get certified from certain agencies <clears throat> uh, easy uh, Anjali thank you sir for taking my question thank you Anjali uh, easy yoga studio is asking sir this is a this is valley phd scholar your way of teaching wonderful sir i just completed five classes only have to go through the remaining class any explanation about stress hormones um, thank you uh, for um, thank you for you know understanding and uh, you know i'm happy that you you have benefited from these lectures uh, for hormone stress related there is a full one or two lectures dedicated on the biology of stress uh, it is in the week, I think, second week. You just go through those lectures. I think detailed explanations are given in the biological aspect of stress. Uh, weightage from assignment is 25%. So somebody asked, no, how many questions will come from assignment? So it's 25% will come from the assignments <clears throat> in the final exam. Professor uh, Manoroma is a thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Professor. Anjali, sir, uh, the question is from assignment six. Okay, I'll look into the assignment six. Which question? You just kindly mail me so that I can check it. The options are wrong in the question which I mentioned above. Uh, I, I will check. Assignment six, which question number you just mail me? I'll check it. Uh, Anila is asking sir thank you so much for this course it helped me a lot for better understanding also thank you for clearing uh, my doubt uh, may I know your email ID I think email ID is there in the course content the course page uh, but if it is not there you can just you know it is dhusain at iitg.se.in uh, I don't know whether you will be able to write it or not but I think uh, this email ID will be there in the course page there you can find the contents uh, Gita is a thank you thank you Gita. so I think we are almost one hour so if you have any questions uh, last question probably I can take one more otherwise we'll stop here uh, thank you very much for your enthusiastic participation uh, it seems that you are all enjoying this course and uh, understanding and getting interested in the content I'm very happy to hear that you are all getting benefited by this course. Uh, we'll have one more live session uh, in the coming month. Uh, so uh, I'm hoping to see you all again and uh, have a very lively discussion again. Thank you.